St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Good morning, good people. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor in Lachine, Quebec. The Mass is offered in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the living of deceased members of this man's family. We know that this television Mass brings meaning to thousands of lives across Canada. And they join with me in thanking you in Lachine, Quebec for this gift. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll prepare ourselves for celebrating this Mass by always remembering the God's goodness and God's graciousness to each of us. Being mindful too of the times in our lives when we fail to respond to that goodness and that graciousness, we ask again for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, increase our eagerness to do your will and help us to know the saving power of your love. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. A reading from the book of Sirach. I thank you and praise you, O God, my Savior, and I bless the name of the Lord. While I was young, before I went on my travels, I sought wisdom openly in prayer. Before the temple, I asked for her, and I will search for her until the end. From the first blossom to the ripening grape, my heart delighted in her. My foot walked on the straight path. From my youth, I followed her steps. I inclined my ear a little, and received her, and I found for myself much instruction. I made progress in her. To him who gives wisdom, I will give glory. For I resolved to live according to wisdom, and I was zealous for the good, and I shall never be disappointed. My soul grappled with wisdom, and in my conduct I was strict. I spread out my hands to the heavens, and I lamented my ignorance of her. I directed my soul to her, and in purity I found her. The word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The 
fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The precepts of of his message live within you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jerusalem. As he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and scribes and the elders came to Jesus and said, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you authority to do them? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Answer me. They argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, they were afraid of the crowd, for all regarded John as truly a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The Gospel of the Lord. A number of years ago, I received a very interesting Christmas card. It showed the wood of the manger rising up into a cross. And the wording on the card said, for this was I born, for this I came into the world. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus not, did not come into the world to die on the cross. He answered Pilate's question, are you a king, with this powerful statement, for this was I born, for this I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Pilate mockingly asked Jesus, what is truth? And really wasn't interested in Jesus' answer. Someone described this section of Mark's gospel as the gathering storm. As we heard in yesterday's gospel, Jesus caused great consternation as he drove the merchants and the money changers who were buying and selling in the temple area. He drove them away. By his action, he bore witness to the truth. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations but you have made it into a den of thieves. And this put Jesus on a coalition course with the authorities who were determined that 
he had to go. They challenged Jesus by demanding to know by what authority he did these things. So Jesus did not die because of the miracles he worked. He died because he bore witness to the truth, the truth about the shortcomings of their religious leaders, the truth about the shortcomings of their empty religious rituals, and especially the truth that God so loved the world, he sent his son to the world, not to condemn it, but to embrace it. Down through history, we've had many, many examples of men and women who stood for the truth and suffered for doing so. Archbishop Romero was murdered for speaking the truth of the injustice of the exploitation of the poor and the violence done to them. Martin Luther King died for speaking the truth about the evil of racism and bigotry. And this past week, a Christian politician, Shabbos Bati, was murdered for speaking against the, bl against the blasphemy laws that calls for the death penalty for anybody even accused of speaking against the prophet. In the ordinary living of our ordinary lives, there can be times when we're asked to have the courage to bear witness to the truth and challenge family members, friends and neighbors or fellow workers who put down people and belittle them, reject them by racist or sexist or bigoted remarks. It could be at a bridge table, a bingo game, a coffee clutch, or even a lineup at a cashier, when because of an offhanded remark, we may be challenged to bear witness of the truth as we let someone know we don't accept their racist or sexist or bigoted remarks. Then we are bearing witness to the truth that we are all loved by God and Christ died on the cross for every person regardless of their sex, orientation, color, faith, or social standing, or racial origin. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, we can pray for ourselves and for each other, that the Lord increase our eagerness to do God's will, and always bear witness to this basic truth, that out of love, Christ died for us all. And may the Lord bless us and give us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now place before loving God our needs and our intentions. For our Holy Father and his brother bishops, for religious leaders of all faiths and all denominations, that the Spirit of God be with them to enlighten them strengthen them and guide them. For this we pray to the Lord. For all those who suffer discrimination and persecution because of their faith, and for the men, women, and children who are caught up in the political turmoils in the countries of North Africa, we pray to the Lord. For the needs and intentions of all you good people sharing in this Mass across Canada, and for those who made it possible, we pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we make these petitions known to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, for he is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life.
Okay. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to our almighty God. God of love, may the sacrifice we offer in obedience to your command renew our resolution to be faithful to your word. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. In love you created us, in justice you condemned us. But in mercy, you redeemed us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels and all the choirs of heaven worship and awe before your presence. May our voices be one with theirs as they sing with joy the hymn of your glory. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the workings of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim a mystery of faith.
Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by his body and blood, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of the saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Basil and all your saints, on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may the sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Benedict, our Bishop Thomas, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of this family gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your people, wherever they may be. And welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We pray now with confidence of the Father using the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We greet one another with the greeting of Christ's peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to this table. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for wisdom? I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life, and I was given life that I might enjoy all things. Amen. Before we end the Mass, just the whole thing about um, having respect for other people is so important, especially in a city like Toronto we, where we come from every corner of the globe. And it's uh, no matter what our, our beliefs or lack of beliefs, no matter what, every one of us was so precious to God that he sent his son into the world to reconcile the world to himself through the body, through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And so when we look at another, the very basic thing that Jesus said was, whatever you do to one of these, the least of mine, you do to me. I used to say to the kids in school, what do you have to do if you want to see Jesus? And they all knew the answer. I look at the person next to me. I look at the person, if you don't see him there, you don't see him because that's where he's meeting you and the person next to you. So we continue on this day and uh, just try to keep that in mind, that every person we meet, in that person we meet Jesus, and how we treat them is how we treat him. So let us pray. Almighty God, in this Eucharist, you give us a joy of sharing your life. Keep us in your presence, and let us never be separated from you. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Lachine, Quebec whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible.